Sir, can you hear me, all of you? Yes. 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 We we, we hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, can I start? Yes, sure, sir. Okay. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Good evening to all of you. I hope you all are well amid this COVID-19. I pray for the salvation of the souls of those who have lost their lives in the COVID-19 global pandemic, as well as sympathize with their bereaved family. I wish for recovery of all those who have been infected with the coronavirus and currently undergoing coronavirus treatment. The year 2020 is very important in our socioeconomic lives and the education in this pandemic situation of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Saiful Islam, lecturer, Department of Finance and Banking, National University of Bangladesh. Welcoming all to our today's international web conference. The conference title is Challenges in Higher Education and After During and After COVID-19, Association with Professional P Academia. Former Secretary General of United Nations, Kofi Annan said, knowledge is power, information is liberty. Education is the premise of progress in every society, in every family. So in this very good evening, we are here with a galaxy of intellectual of the world to discuss the challenges in higher education during and after COVID-19. Before we drive into the first session of our international conference, it would be great if we introduce our today's resource person to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really privileged and honored to introduce our distinguished guest in a panel of today's conference. They are from USA, UK, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, at first, I want to extend a warm welcome to today's session chair, Professor Dr. Nurul Islam Sir, Dean of School of Business, an advisor to the Board of Trustees, Kanda University, Bangladesh. Along with, he has also worked for more than 17 years in different business schools of public and private universities of Bangladesh, such as Khulna University, North-South University, Bragg University, East West University, and Eastern University, and also Uttara University. Welcome, sir, in our international conference. Now, my heartiest welcome to our resource person, Dr. Sabur Khan. He is also famous on entrepreneur in our education sector in Bangladesh and chairman Devodil International University as well as Devodil family. Along with, he has also director World IT and Service Alliance, WITSA, and chairman Global Trade Committee, WITSA. Honorary of Fellowship, said Business School, Oxford, a guest professor, Cheng Chon University of Finance and Economics in China. Former president, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI, as well as Bangladesh Computer Summiti, BCS. Welcome, sir, to our international conference. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, thank you, because I just uh, keep the mute. Yes. It will be my honor to introduce another resource person, Professor Dr. K. Maran, Director, as well as Coordinator, Education Cell, Sairam Inst Institute of Management Studies, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. He has more than 20 years teaching experience in various business schools in India, as well as other countries also. He produced more than 30 PhD and 65 MPhil candidates in business administration field. He has also published around 201 articles in different national and international journals. Welcome, sir, to our international conference. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, my privilege to introduce our next distinguished professor, uh, and as well as research person, Professor Dr. Mohammad Saleh Johar, sir, Department of Finance, University of Chittagong. As well as currently, he is the independent director, Islami Bank Bangladesh Limited, Bangladesh. He has served advisor as a Chittagong Stock Exchange, as well as GPA Spot Limited. Prior to that, he, was, he worked as an independent director of GPA Spot Limited, as well as Hakkani Pulp and Paper Mills Limited. Welcome, sir, to our international conference. Thank you. Hello, Saibul, can you hear us? Dear professors, are you hearing us? I think Saibul has got problem in connection. I think we have lost some people. Saibul, right. Then we can continue. Can I continue? I can only see two, you and me. I don't know. What happened to others? Hello? Hello, Professor Maran. Can you hear me? Hello? Sir, hearing, sir. Your okay. voice is hearing. Yeah. Yeah, it's clear. Is it clear? Clear, clear. You can proceed. Okay. I think I think um, uh, Mr. Saiful Islam, he has a problem in his uh, connection, so we can continue. So sir, he I, introduced. Sir, um, sir already uh, I have solved this problem because I have called some internet. internet quickly, quickly to introduce. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir uh, how much I have completed up to Arhan? Yeah. Sir, Arhan, sir. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Saiful, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sure, this sir. is Arhan. Okay. okay All right. Thank please you, go sir. ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Only now, uh, we lost your uh, connection. Yes, sir. Uh, some some okay. problem behind this network. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And now, it will be privileged for me to introduce another resource person, Dr. Mazhar Islam, Assistant Professor of Management and International Business, College of Business, Loyola University, New Orleans, USA. Welcome, sir, in our session. Hi. Um. Thank you. Now is our. Saiful, I think I introduced yes, uh, Professor Arpit. Sir. I think that password missed, so you might like to introduce him again. The professor from Nepal. Oh, sure, sir. This is sure. Sir. Already I have done, but, but in the meantime, I have lost in my uh, internet connection. That's right. Okay, sir. Again, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Our distinguished research person, Professor Dr. Arhan. So with Faculty of Management and Law, Nepal Open University, Nepal. Earlier, he has taught a Faculty of Management 
and Pigovan University more than eight years. And as well as he is a local expert of GTI Limited. Welcome, sir, in our international session. Now, I'd like to again, or it will be my honor to introduce another district person, Mr. Mamun Al Boshi, Assistant Professor Hall, University of Business School, University of Hall, United Kingdom. Welcome, sir, in our international session. Thank you. There, sir. Yes. Welcome. A very warm welcome to all the participants and viewers from various prestigious universities and industrial uh, sectors across the globe. Before going to begin our session, I want to give an introduction to our today's conference. This COVID-19 pandemic needs no introduction, and we are well aware of that. It has so far imp impacted by not only different sectors of developing countries, but also in many sectors of developing countries as well. More than 86 countries across the globe facing these challenges. And at this approximately 1.7 billion students from primary, secondary, and tertiary level are affected by the COVID-19. This impact has been dramatic and transformative as teachers struggle to come up with the short-term solution from remote testing and learning, particularly in Asian universities as well as the globe. Facing the additional challenges related to financial and infrastructure support to continue these studies. The, the Ministry of Education around the world have been developing a wide mix approach to address education disruption and at the same time, the foster quality education learning. Most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, leaving no one behind on that note, this international web conference amid this share the impact of COVID-19 and strategy to overcome challenges in teaching learning process in different countries of the world during this COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, I am really honored that we have been seven distinguished guests with us on the panel. Now, I want to move on our next session. Before that, I want to request all of our Facebook friends, colleagues, and our students, please log in our Facebook page and comment, uh, comment us with your constructive way. Then our next session, I will try, uh, we will try to come up your question and session. Now, I would like to request our uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Nurul Islam, sir, please float this over to continue your technical session with our Honorable guest, sir. Thank you, Mr. Saipal. I welcome you all to this very important web conference. And you already know that the conference will be on challenges in higher education during and after COVID-19. So I am going to start with the uh, very resource person, a very high and distinguished okay. resource Dr. M.D. Sabur Khan, who is right now the chairman of Daffodil International University and also Daffodil family and also famous educational entrepreneur of Bangladesh. I would like to request Dr. M.D. Sabur Khan to say something about the challenges in higher education during and after COVID-19 in Bangladesh. Dr. Sabur Khan. Mike, Mike, we are not listening to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nazrul Islam. Thank you, because uh, giving me the floor first time. So as I understood, a lot of these uh, distinguished guests are present here, and I'm sure that everybody will share their view in respect of COVID-19. So as per my uh, idea, I should say that, that look, it's an opportunity, and always I love to say that COVID-19 was a big threat for all of us. We understood that everybody is uh, really we are in the big threat and we are in the lockdown and we cannot able to run our day-to-day -day operation. But at the same time, I think it was, I, I must say that the, it was a very great uh, opportunity for all of us to learn how to utilize the technology. And honestly speaking, uh, if the COVID-19 uh, is not came, came to our society, I think we cannot realize that how technology is developed nowadays and even that i must say that the in respect of our university 
almost more than 12 years we are trying to implement the technology uh, the teaching technology because you know that the nowadays student need to get the real interaction through the technology but somehow our teacher was not willing to accept the technology but when this uh, uh, covid 19 is a hit in our whole industry i am sure that the, from the march march 26 uh, everybody realized that without technology without uh, utilizing the technology it's really impossible to survive so that is the one of the reason i must say that the education sector is really getting a lot of this uh, milestone a lot of this disruption and of course at the same time i should say it is a good opportunity to the, for the student and also the teacher those who really accepted these challenges because i'm sure that there are almost more than 40 to 45 percent teacher and student they are really uh, accepted the challenge so they learn a lot of things i personally i met with a lot of the student a lot of the teacher through the uh, internet and everybody i found that those who already accepted this uh, uh, this opportunity or challenge I, I i'm sure that they will never become failure because there's plenty of plugin is going on plenty of uh, new new technologies came to in our society even that if you just uh, think that google is already a lot of days ago uh, Google is already discovered the Google trend. We know the Google, uh, you know, location, Google map, Google art, everything we already have. But recently, you see a lot of the popularity, you can find out the Google trend. So what you can get it the art, using the artificial intelligence. If you ask to the Google that what is the people's mindset in the morning and what age group you are expecting, you are getting the all of this question from the Google trend. So these sorts of lot of, lot of challenge and lot of opportunities came to our society. And it is the time uh, for all of us really to embrace the, this uh, uh, development. And I should say, again, the student uh, need to know the lot of this technology. As I, as, as I repeatedly love to say, that this is a great chance for our educationalists to show the technological development to our student so that the student also use this technology. Because Industrial Revolution 4, and artificial intelligence, you know, there's everything is already giving us a very clear message. Without technology, I think no profession will be survived. Uh, you already understood that every sector only survive in this COVID-19, those who are able to utilize properly technology. So I must say that, uh, again, this COVID-19 is, of course, uh, it was not expected by us that COVID-19 should be at this long term, but at the same time, I must say that this last four months or five months, uh, everyone is learned a lot. And please, it's my request to everyone through this uh, webinar that we need to continue this technological development. What exactly we practice? You see that now I think if uh, we are we are organizing this virtual meeting and we don't know who is sitting in wh whatever place, it doesn't matter. But the matter is that how we just keeping this trend in our educational uh, arena so that we should not forget because uh, in this short time, I cannot give the thousand of example, but I, I must again, again I, I should say that I'm really lucky that all of our university teacher, first time they were confused, but now if I'm not wrong, almost 99% teacher, they adapted this technological change. So our students are really first time, they were very confused. There was internet problem. There was a lot of the disruption in, because some of the students, they are staying in the remote area. They are not getting the bandwidth. They are not getting the proper scope. But slowly, slowly, we already develop some technology. So it, is, it doesn't matter. The student need to participate in the online class instantly. Rather, they are getting a lot of the resources, a lot of the lot of their class material through the technology. So whatever time or whatever uh, opportunity they are getting, they can easily download. They can uh, they can use their all of the class lecture. They can share with their friend. They can share with the teacher. We already develop the mentoring monitoring system. So all of, all teacher can easily communicate with the student communicate with the parents, communicate with the, all of their peers. So it is a, a great opportunity, I should say, again, to, to use this technology in this COVID-19. And I, I must, again, uh, I, must, I must humbly say that the, we, we need to continue this one so that the whole education system will be developing because the way we are moving uh, based on the only the result and based on the class, I'm sure that this source of education will not change our country's economical condition. So thank you, Dr. Nozrul Islam, and thank you, uh, the moderator, to invite me and to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sobur Khan. In fact, you you brought the uh, positive uh, side of this 
technology uh, technological issue and positive side of this covid impact and uh, uh, it is uh, true that from the beginning our faculty members and students they were not receptive of this uh, of the use of ict in teaching learning process but after some time in last 3 or 4 months now it is it is accepting by our uh, teaching community and becoming important and important so usually if there is any problem there is any solution to so in this uh, pandemic it is a problem and it is a threat it is a challenge but at the same time you correctly mentioned that it also opened a, an opportunity for us to learn to use the latest information and communication technology in our higher education in our teaching learning process at the university level thank you dr sabur khan for emphasizing this issue and the uh, identification of the opportunity from the uh, challenges thanks sabur khan uh, so we, we shall come to you uh, uh, later on now uh, i would like to invite uh, professor dr k maran who is a good friend of mine and he is connected from india so i would like to uh, hear from professor maran what about the impact of covid-19 in higher education higher education uh, institutions and or in higher education in indian context dr maran thank you dr nasrul uh, first of all my good evening to all and all my panelists the organizer the chair person of this great international webinar on the challenges in higher education during covid-19 and also post covid-19 so in this great forum i would like to share my views what are the problems which are faced by indians including school educations and higher educational institutions so before that i would like to quote something about education education is empowering of every individual in our life without education which is not indicating of indian economy or the global economy or bangladesh economy the education is one of the major indicator for the betterment of economy the education is one of the best indicator of a very excellent employment opportunities the empowerment of every individual so in this critical situations now we are talking about higher education what are the problems we are facing there are n number of problems the students are facing we are talking during this covid period how to start our educations to whom you can teach how you can teach for all questions which is really answered the great technology technology is a solution of every problem in our life so this kind of technology is connecting of each and every people in the world so with this technology what we are doing in india the ministry of higher education during this pandemic period there are n number of issues in network infrastructure development institutional development in moreover moreover the students mindset is very very important so in this critical situations the government of india ministry of charity insisting all the institutions you need to teach through that online system so many platform which are there even right from the schooling still higher education people are teaching but at the same time even this covid period or the post covid period what are the problems we are facing our economy is good employment also good still we need to improve in our higher education so in this great occasions i need to share some of area the teaching and learning process very very important even in our digital teaching methodology more than 120 methods which are available so which method i need to use so i need to strengthen my faculty quality in terms of technological enhancement the technological enhancement is very very important of every teachers you could teach my engineering technology science teachers where in this case of commerce business social science humanities or your language teachers which is really very difficult to implement such kind of a digital learning system the digital teaching system online teaching system this is one of the biggest challenge not only in india i hope everywhere the problem is always there so at the same time the second aspect the student aspect the students mindset is very very important the students mindset what they are doing where in this case of developed country 
or the students, those who are pursuing higher education in National University Singapore or in Nanning Technology, Harvard Universities, their system something different. The way of development is something different. The way of teaching methodology is something different. Where in this case of India, like Pakistan or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka and all Asian countries or what you call the developed countries, developing countries, the education system only in the classroom management is very, very important. Even we are speaking something, how many of them listening, how many of them attending, how many of them heard knowledge. Only those who are having such interest, involvement, that people can able to gain something. So the student aspect of the teaching system is very, very important. But you cannot attract almost all students to listen your classroom. Whereas the teachers have such a skill, ability, talent, then only I can able to capturing of my students mind. This is another one major obstacles in digital learning systems. And one more thing, what about the governance is very, very important. The governance in the sense what the government regulations in our educational system, the transparent systems are very, very important. In, our, in, in India, like Bangladesh, what happened here? The government institution is there, aided institution also there, self finance institution are there, different educational systems, but the government regulations, government governance, still we need to improve to strengthen the quality of education. So far, we are highly betterment in education. Those days, we are exporting our physical resources. Today, we are exporting our human brain, the software engineers, they are dominating in different countries. They are earning more amount of income, the researchers, scientists, which shows the quality of education. Still, we need to improve, even in our grass enrollment ratio in higher education, India is a, one of the third largest country in the world market. Though we have all qualities and some things, still we need to improve in different parameters. At the same time, what we are teaching here, the research-based teaching is very, very important. The innovation-based teaching is more important. Entrepreneurial teaching is more important. Startup-based teaching is more important. When you are given this kind of importance to my students, while you are teaching to students, even if you are teaching for commerce or the management or the economics or what you call it, the literatures or the engineering and science technologies, everything is entrepreneurial oriented is very, very important. Now the government of India for the past one decade, they are initiating n number of activities for the betterment of students through the Ministry of HRD, Institutional Innovation Center, Institution of Entrepreneurship, still they are focusing more and more. But those who are following their regulations, those who are following the systems, now they are maintaining such a great quality in their institution. Even my institution also, one of the best institutions in India, one of the top 200 engineering institutions in India, which is rated by Ministry of HRD, National Institutional Ranking Framework. So almost all of my friends are aware of it. So in these great occasions, those who are ready to accept the technology, those who are ready to adapt to the technologies, so such kind of people only can able to lift to their organizations, lift to their people, lift to the societies. So in these great occasions, though we have, we had n number of issues during this pandemic, but we are trying to rectify all these things. For all these things, we need the only one tool, I believe, I trust only the teacher. As a teacher, when you believe yourself, when you are strengthening your quality, shaping your quality, then you can be able to molding up my students, shaping up my students, preparing students for the community in different dimensions. So in these great occasions, my grateful thank Dr. Nazrul has given a wonderful opportunity to share some of rich experience, a small experience with rich peoples. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Maran, for connecting uh, this uh, very important conference and uh, sharing your valuable thoughts and and the impact of COVID-19 in Indian context. You are very right that technology is the solution of every problem in our life. So we shall have to technology. We shall have to use this technology. We shall have to use this information and communication technology to solve these uh, all kinds of problems, including the COVID-19 uh, generated problems. You have also mentioned in your um, uh, lecture that the uh, uh, main obstacle uh, in this teaching learning process is uh, uh, digital grading system. You are very correct because the, we are not used to uh, grade the student, grade our students digitally. Therefore, a kind of um, faith and also belief is absent there. 
therefore yeah, i guess it will take some time to establish uh, uh, belief and uh, to accept to establish acceptance among the faculty members among the students guardians and the other stakeholders uh, and and this obstacle also will be overcome uh, very soon as we are exercising this you have also mentioned that this uh, overcoming these obstacles the main and prime uh, effort is to be connected to strengthen the quality of our teachers quality in use of technology so we shall have to uh, improve the teaching quality we shall have to improve the quality of teaching that means faculty training program indirectly you mentioned that we shall have to con conduct so that we can enhance and we can improve and develop the teaching learning process even in this digital uh, system and uh, when it will be accepted it will be accepted by the all stakeholders of this industry thanks professor maran now i would like to um, uh, request another distinguished um, uh, professor professor dr mohammad saleh zahur and and i am sure that saleh zahur is going to talk about the bangladesh context and impact of um, uh, covid 19 on uh, higher education uh, uh, industry in bangladesh professor saleh zahur thank you sir thank you professor dr nazrul islam for giving me an opportunity to talk so i'm sharing i'm just going to share the screen sir do you see sir not yet is it visualized not yet sir bol can you allow <clears throat> not yet not yet so do you hear me yes we can hear you yes, sir, sir do you hear me yes, yes sir yes, then okay you. sir now i'm just uh, uh, giving uh, my views uh well uh, uh, as far as education in bangladesh is concerned uh, just a uh, formal education in bangladesh has three major stage primary secondary and higher after 12 years of schooling one can go for higher education just i'm very quick higher education in bangladesh in in general education system higher secondary is followed by college university level education through the post graduate and honors graduate course this such as agriculture medicine information technology belong to the technical stream ex except technical education four year program and other are first uh, other one two, three years program there are madrasas in the higher education institutions well uh, higher education in bangladesh structure bangladesh now has 53 public universities to the bulk of higher studies is students total number of approved private university there are two international universities in bangladesh and there is a list of proposed public and private universities at least total of 100 and recognized college in bangladesh that is 6 percent we we cannot hear you professor saleh zahur I may be in internet disruption. I think his uh, mic is disturbing. Hello. 
Can you hear me, sir? Hello, Professor Zahur. <clears throat> sir, can I start another guest? Because already he, uh, sir, is disconnected from our uh, stream here. I will okay, try to be kind to, to him, and in, among this time, you will okay. just carry on another guest. Uh, later on. Uh, yes. Dear participants, now I am going to invite. Uh, another distinguished research person, Professor Dr. Arham Shapit, uh, Professor of uh, uh, Business, Faculty of Management and Law, Nepal Open University. Professor Shapit. Uh, thank you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, please uh, allow me to use uh, my slide. Uh, uh, so I'm sharing the screen. Okay. All right, so uh, can you see, sir? Can you see this slide? Not really. Not yet, sir? Not really. Not coming, sir? No. I think uh, better go uh, extempore because there is okay. a problem, I guess, in sharing slides. Oh, 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 okay, no problem, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll go. All right, so. Sir, okay. your, your, your camera may be off, sir, so far. Sorry? Your camera may be off, sir. Camera. Sir, camera is off, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm sorry for that. My cam camera not cooking. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm not sharing the screen now. Uh, all right, so I'll go ahead. Session Chair, Professor Dr. Nazarul Islam, sir, distinguished uh, resource persons, uh, erudite scholars, uh, and participants. Um, so I esteem uh, it my great privilege to be here among uh, the erudite uh, scholars and uh, academic leaders. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I, my uh, camera not working. I beg apology for that. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, the Nepalese uh, perspective also on, uh, on challenges in higher education during and after COVID-19. So basically, uh, first I would talk a little bit about Corona crisis in Nepal and Nepalese context. Uh, so uh, as in other parts of uh, South Asia, Nepal also uh, imposed uh, lockdown from the 24th March. And now uh, we have relaxed the lockdown uh, for from uh, July twenty uh, second now. So okay. So uh, today, as of today, uh, Nepal's uh, total Corona caseload uh, is uh, uh, had just crossed eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Okay. And out of uh, eighteen thousand, thirteen thousand have recovered, uh, which comes from around uh, seventy two to seventy three percent. So a nationwide uh, death toll is only forty four. One of the lowest in South Asia, I believe. Uh, okay. So. Um, uh, in the context of Nepal, uh, now, uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, higher education in Nepal also was uh, uh, re really uh, adversely hit by Corona crisis, the pandemic and the lockdown. So lockdown stalled uh, the final and end term exams of master's and bachelor's level universities in Nepal. Uh, and also it uh, stalled the end school level SEEs exams in Nepal. So, uh, and then now, then government uh, will permit schools, colleges, and universities to call their new admissions only from uh, August 17. So, still a few weeks uh, to go again. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, even today, the ban on operating normal physical classes uh, will continue. Uh, so, the, it is not uh, likely sometime before uh, August 17. Uh, therefore, at this time, uh, online classes still are the only mode possible in Nepal as of now. Okay, so due to Corona pa pandemic, uh, higher education has been adversely affected. So uh, 
universities moved towards uh, IT enabled classes. Uh, so that was the online classes basically uh, after this lockdown, uh, dur during this lockdown. Okay. So they used both the synchronous and asynchronous classes. Uh, but at the same time, the impediment to teaching uh, learning process were re uh, realized here. Okay. Then, uh, Talking about the major challenges and issues that we have faced, uh, so I would uh, put them basically uh, into uh, three major, four major areas, key challenges areas. One is human wear, that is about uh, human beings, so uh, uh, human resources, the talents that uh, we have to train uh, in this change context. And the second uh, key challenge area is the software. And then another, so after software, then another very important area is the system or management system. Uh, so we have faced a lack of agility, uh, lack of flexibility, innovation, and resilience uh, from time to time. And the fourth key area, challenge, a key challenge area is macroeconomic factors, sorry, macro environmental factors like uh, governance issue, public policy and practices. So there are uh, glitches and uh, problems in these areas. At the same time, uh, the role being played by stakeholders, including uh, society, employers, students, uh, then guardians, uh, teachers, then higher education institution, administration staff, and others. Then, uh, uh, to talking about these four uh, major uh, key challenge areas, now uh, let me uh, talk specifically about other challenges that we have faced, not only in Nepal, uh, in, uh, in, in South Asia, and uh, maybe in, well, probably in many, many other parts of the world. So one particular area is uh, we have uh, faced policy uncertainty and policy inconsistencies uh, coming to, uh, to the higher education system in this part of the world. So then another very critical area is uh, a critical challenge is in uh, the system uh, systemic barriers so there we have uh, experienced uh, systemic barriers to switch to blended and online modes of education challenges are there to uh, teaching and learning methods particularly it is in the area of curriculum design because in the past we we have had the conventional way of designing a curriculum uh, then all those curricula would not be uh, fit for this new changed uh, situation when we uh, faced uh, the uh, this pandemic and lo lockdown and moved towards uh, uh, blended or online modes of education. And there, are, there is also big challenge to sustain quality outcomes in the context of remote learning when we uh, resort to it. Okay, then another very uh, big challenge is in the assessment system, examination, and uh, other evaluation system of the students. Well, then the third one I'm talking about. So first was about policy. Second one was about uh, uh, systemic barriers. And now the third one is quality assurance and recognition issues in higher education. Uh, in, in, during this uh, COVID situation, the entire process has been disrupted. So uh, the issue of quality assurance and re recognition of the uh, uh, academic degrees uh, so these these have come under scrutiny, and now fourth one is school reopening to ensure learning continuity. Now there there is a lot of uh, confusion, chaos about how to uh, reopen schools uh, to ensure uh, learning continuity, uh, because we have just uh, uh, well you know squander some something about uh, four months. Uh, so that is also something to be really. Uh, you know, worry about, worried about. Okay, so there are another uh, fifth uh, uh, challenge is lapses in crisis sensitive education planning. Earlier, we did not even think of this crisis sensitive education planning. We never thought of that. And the, then even now, if we try to go into that, there are lapses because we are not accustomed to it. Okay. And now, if you really uh, try to use online-based education, there are uh, you know, plethora of problems. So access to ICT, internet hassles because of bandwidth, uninterrupted uh, supply of uh, internet, uh, power backup problem, technical glitches, so many things. And uh, IT literacy is another problem in uh, online-based education. And also, uh, very surprisingly, uh, the students' behavior online uh, is usually unpredictable. Uh, because you don't see them face to face, then uh, it's likely that they might uh, make some, uh, you know, um, uh, 
cheating or sometimes you know make uh, unwanted undesirable sounds and all sometimes okay and even if you have got the code of conduct for such on, uh, online classes then again non compliance issue there um, um, from different stakeholders and they might not comply with those uh, the the codes of conduct and also management of attendance is another big challenge in uh, online education and then hardship in follow up particularly for assignment and all that is also a big challenge now the point here is the way forward now i'm talking briefly about the way forward what we should do now so uh, first first of all i would like to emphasize on uh, the adoption of crisis sensitive educational planning crisis sensitive educational planning a must okay so uh, keeping quality assurance and uh, uh, recognition in perspective we have to keep quality assurance and recognition in perspective now the second step we can uh, adopt is collaboration we have to promote collaboration collaboration not only at the level uh, at the uh, local level but at the global level at the regional level for example here we have uh, sark level or beamstick level uh, collaboration we can also have national level uh, collaboration or and, and also international uh, collaboration within the uh, higher education institutions in Nepal in, in your country uh, and it's very important that you develop the effective policy formulation and implementation mechanism for that and uh, the, then the third one is uh, discussion and uh, cooperation with all the st stakeholders so orientation or uh, development programs for all stakeholders teachers more more importantly teachers mm -hmm. then students parents and gu guardians particularly they really need orientation uh, in this change context okay and then education administrators uh, the, the higher education institution heads and all and then society all should be orientated towards it and now the next uh, suggestion uh, or strategy i would like to uh, uh, put it here is the customization and contextualization of courses, syllabi, or, or even our lesson plans, um, because the, the, the whole system, uh, situation has changed now. Okay, then uh, also in terms of content, now we have to develop the new uh, syllabi and all uh, all those things. Okay, even lesson plans, everything. So then next one is like a promotion of access to relevant technology, uh, like ICT uh, technology. Okay, ICT. Uh, or use of uh, artificial intelligence and all. And more importantly, I see uh, the, the, another very important uh, strategy would be like a st engagement of both the teachers and students in the uh, teaching learning process because uh, the, the whole thing uh, ha has changed. So uh, we cannot afford uh, the lapses now. Therefore, we have to work together. So uh, engagement of both the teachers, students, very important. And uh, then, okay, creation of a supportive learning environment. Uh, you know, we, we have to manage a blended mode of uh, learning, including both online mode, uh, classroom, face-to-face -face learning mode and all. So formulation and implementation of a code of conduct is very important for that. And uh, backup of so policy and uh, tec technical support is also very important to create the supportive learning environment. And more importantly, the positive attitude of all the stakeholders equally important. And finally, a uh, mechanism to provide ongoing feedback should be there so uh, having said this much i would like to uh, conclude my uh, my point here and uh, if one door closes many other doors will open so this is what i believe thank you very much so over to uh, professor nazrul sir yeah thank you professor arhan you have identified um, uh, uh, correctly and um, uh, rightly that the problems are concerned with human, concerned with software, concerned with the system, management system. And basically, these all are, can be uh, focused towards the, uh, towards as the systematic barriers. Because uh, we have switched from uh, person, uh, in-person education system to digital education system. Our all curriculums are not fitting with this uh, system of teaching learning process. Our assessment system again uh, was not ready. Uh, digitally, uh, we are not ready to assess our students. That means we actually 
uh, um, uh, we are not ready to face this kind of crisis and this kinds of kind of sensitive education system to adapt before. However, in Bangladesh, uh, uh, there are few universities who are ready to adapt this um, IT-based um, um, teaching learning uh, process, in, in specifically, especially in private university, uh, such as Deputy uh, International University, I know they were ready uh, at least before one year uh, to Swiss or how to face this crisis, they are ready. And of course, my university, Canadian University, although it is a new university, but uh, it was also ready to face this kind of crisis, this kind of crisis which will occur very soon. So thanks, Professor um, uh, Arhan, uh, for uh, identifying and explaining the uh, Nepali con Nepal context regarding the impact of uh, COVID-19 on higher education in uh, higher education in Nepal. Thanks, uh, Professor Arhan. Now I would Thank like you, uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mama Salazar again. Salazar, are you there? Hello. Salazar, are you there? Can you hear me? I think he has a connection problem. Okay, let us uh, switch to another speaker. Now, I would like to invite uh, another speaker from the United States of America, and he is a professor of Loyola University, New Orleans, USA, uh, Dr. Mazar Islam. And I am sure that Mazar uh, is uh, visiting Asian, European, and African countries. Uh, repeatedly, he visited, and he will be able to uh, uh, identify some uh, impact areas which will be useful for the uh, participants of this uh, conference. Dr. Mazar Islam. Mazar Islam. Thank you, Dr. Nozrul Islam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nozrul, for organizing this, and also thank you to other Islams in the panel. Uh, so uh, uh, I would like to take only five minutes because we are running out of time. So uh, what I will do is that I will briefly, first of all, I'm not an expert or an university administrator. And I would like to point out that because I have limited knowledge of what's going on in a country like United States, because it's a big country, right? So to begin with, I want most, uh, most of you probably know how the business model of US universities is some, somewhat different from many parts of the world. If you compare with Europe or Asia, many of the US universities depend on revenues that are outside, say, for example, tuition fees. So when students come to college or universities, they spend a lot of money on, say, housing or maybe in the gym or in the cafeteria and other kind of facilities. In addition to that, universities are often um, a place for hosting conferences and other events. So universities have uh, multiple sources of revenues that are outside this traditional tuition fees. So when um, so that varies from universities to universities. Of course, we have private universities, public universities. We have we have liberal arts colleges, and also we have some for-profit kind of uh, schools in this country, right? So. Going back to uh, what Dr. Shabul Khan said at the beginning, you know, it's an exogenous shock what happened with COVID that we are all got, uh, uh, we are all caught into this sudden uh, once in a century kind of event that nobody was prepared, right? So what I would say next few minutes is how these universities are preparing or prepared for the fall semester. Now, there are some universities which are in a better position because they had online infrastructure from before, like the university I am now at Loyola in New Orleans, we have online programs before. Or the university I taught before, for example, Drexel University in Philadelphia, they had really uh, a wonderful uh, uh, latest technology online education before. So for them, it was not, for these universities, it's relatively uh, easier. However, for schools like Tulane, which is also in New Orleans, I used to be a faculty there, it's much harder because they have 
um, they did not have many online programs. They started into this online digital format in recent years. Now, going back to what I was saying, that revenue comes from more than from the from from, from the revenue uh, from the tuition fees. Now, if schools universities go online many of these universities would have a huge, huge loss of revenue. And that's why from an economic sense point of view, most universities are trying or at least have a plan to bring students to campus in this fall semester, right? However, the planning for the fall semester, um, most of this planning have been done maybe three, four, five weeks ago before we have a recent surge of, of, of COVID-19. So, for example, in our school at Loyola, we decided to have many of our, I think two thirds of the classes would be online or some sort of hybrid mode, what we call high, high, high flex mode, like students would, a group of within a class, a one third of the students would come to a class uh, one, once a week. So we will have like students coming in different days of the weeks, as well as universities are prepared to maintain social distance among students, dormitories and hostels have been reorganized to have more distance or spaces for students. Now, the problem is that this COVID-19 has uh, come back. Like in it's many parts of this country now, you see a, an increase of number of cases. And that creates a huge challenge for most of the universities because students have Plan to I have two we have two sons and both of them are going to college or university this fall semester and both of the universities like Franklin Marshall Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster Pennsylvania which is a leading liberal arts school another son would go to Penn State University which is also in Pennsylvania however now schools are in a difficult situation because at one hand they want to bring the students to the campus because of Many of the students who are going to the universities, they want to have on campus experience as a part of their education. And they are now asking, would they get the same level of education? I have taught online for many years using Zoom. I have I have used um, you know other platforms to use online. And I think that in most cases, I'm a business school professor, we can teach online as effectively as I would teach in a in class session. In fact, in fall, my three classes, two of the classes will be synchronous. That means I'll be teaching online using Zoom, like now, right now, what we're doing here. However, as I think Prof, uh, 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 Dr. Moran said, in, in some of the fields, like uh, you know, biology or it could be chemistry, right? When labs are involved, I, I was an engineer, I was an engineering student. Um, I think it's very hard, very hard for universities to offer this kind of courses. So we, at the end, what I would say is that everybody is struggling. I I would not be, I would not love, I would not like to be an administration administrator at a university right now, because these kind of things we have never done before. And it's true that it forces us to bring many of us to digital platform, but it's also an opportunity for many, many universities to offer something they were planning to do before. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Dr. Mazhar Islam, for bringing uh, some uh, issues or some insights which are uh, not present in Asian or, or other African uh, countries, uh, such as in the USA, uh, you were used to in online uh, teaching learning process, in online programs, that in fact, in Asian countries, we were not used to. So the impact uh, is not as like as uh, the impact uh, uh, happened in Asian or European or, or African countries. And also, uh, you have mentioned that uh, some of the universities in the United States, they are now uh, for using hybrid system. That means part of the classes are um, uh, taking uh, in person and part of the classes, uh, uh, some of the classes are taken online. But in, in, in uh, Asian country, I think it is um, uh, almost closed. Every every institute is, institute is closed. Uh, the hybrid system is not uh, not followed, not using in this Asian or African countries. And uh, you have also mentioned that online uh, uh, teaching learning process can be uh, uh, handled effectively. Uh, perhaps the, the faculty members 
and uh, and the users of ICT, latest information communication technology, they got trained uh, to evaluate the uh, answer scripts or the evaluation system of the uh, of the students and also the use of information and communication technology in this online uh, teaching learning method. So, uh, uh, doctor, um, and of course, there uh, there is a financial impact in especially in uh, private institutes or universities because uh, foreign universities, foreign students uh, are unable to move. Mobility has been uh, reduced um, uh, substantially uh, after this uh, 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 COVID-19 uh, 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 impact. And statistics shows a survey has been conducted by international uh, uh, international association of universities, and they identified that um, uh, in 89 percent international students are unable to unable to uh, move uh, from uh, other countries for higher uh, education. So, uh, Dr. Um, Mazar. Thank you very much for uh, for sharing uh, your uh, uh, experience in United States with the uh, participants and and with the uh, stakeholders of uh, this uh, very important uh, education sector. Thanks, uh, Dr. Mazar. Now I would like to request our uh, formal colleague, Dr. Mamun Al Boshir, who is right now the assistant professor, uh, Hall University Business School, University of Hall. United Kingdom. Dr. Mamon, if you uh, please share something about the context of United Kingdom, what actually happened or, or going to happen uh, during and after this COVID-19 in education sector, higher education sector of United Kingdom. Dr. Mamon. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen. Is it, is it shared? Oh. Yes, sir. Is it here? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, basically, uh, I have been asked to talk about the challenges uh, in British higher education during uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, right now, I'm working for University of Hull um, as an assistant professor of supply chain and uh, operations management. Um, so basically, if we talk about British higher education, we know that well. I know uh, in UK we have uh, many uh, good universities, especially the research universities are really, really good. Uh, out of uh, the 500 best universities of the world, almost all the universities of the UK is within the five, 500 universities of the world, so which is a quite achievement for the British universities. Uh, to be very frank, uh, there are there are different sort of experiences uh, we have uh, gone through during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I have divided my discussion basically on three perspectives. Uh, one is from the perspective of the academics, one is the perspective of the students, and then we are going to talk about the perspective of the university as, as a whole as well. So, um, you know, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an academic, we, we have faced different uh, you know, uh, challenges and there are, you know, many more challenges are coming as well because, uh, you know, uh, we have already passed one semester during this COVID-19 and our next semester, which is come, starting from September, is, 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 is going to be very challenging for us, us as well. So the main challenges was during this period of time, especially from March to July, is for from the academic perspective there were a lot of people a lot of teachers who were covid positive positive and their families were affected as well so they were really struggling to you know to deal with the situation some of them has to be in the hospital hospitals and you know had to be isolated and you know quarantined uh, so you know their classes and their uh, you know modules has uh, you know they were a bit affected as well uh, so the university took a lot of different initiatives uh, to cover those situations. Um, as Dr. Mazar rightly mentioned that, well, you know, uh, Western universities like us, 
we had the experience of teaching online modules so uh, we have you know uh, we could have actually converted to an online mode within a week of time we actually only wasted one week between in the semester so that was easy for us because we already had the platform like we have you know panopto or conference different sort of uh, blue big button a lot of different sort of softwares we have already installed in our system and also we can take help from zoom or uh, google team whatever so uh, you know so uh, and our students uh, some of the some of our students were um, you know um, kind of uh, experienced of having online modules however most of them they were not especially the young students like first year students they really struggled because uh, they they didn't understand that you know why we were moving to online or why might not we actually you know postpone the semester to a uh, to a bit but you know because it is really challenging uh, so that's why we could not do that we had to run our uh, modules online uh, we our academics we had to work from home uh, it was sometimes challenging because british academics traditionally they are uh, really um, focused on working in their offices uh, they spend a lot of time in their offices uh, because there was a shifting uh, so we had to start working from home a lot of academics they actually you know faced difficulties especially with the you know internet connections uh, you know uh, you know uh, having proper equipments and all uh, but the university to Took the initiative to solve those problems as you know as early as possible um we were overwhelmed and unsupported in some of the works as well because you know previously when you, we were in the campus we could have gone easily to our colleague to ask for any help we could have gone to our boss our you know department head just to uh, you know have a query but now if you have to do anything you have to write an email and once I open my email every day, I can see there are like hundreds of emails coming from different students, different teachers, different programs and all. So it is a time consuming process and we have to write a lot. Previously, probably we could have just talked to our colleague, you know, you know, in the corridor and we could have said that, well, these are the things that were happening. But now everything is we have to go through email. So that's something we are, um, you know, uh, struggling. And the challenging part is to continue uh, teaching uh, and uh, you know uh, continue teaching and maintaining the quality and the standard that was uh, also a challenging thing because you know um, um, we as british universities we we do, we do fully focus on quality and standards and we cannot go uh, beyond that so basically this is a challenge for all the academics to you know continue of teaching and maintaining uh, um, you know quality and standard uh, uh, there was threat for job layoffs as well, uh, especially the people who are working in contractual positions. They were facing a lot of difficulties because uh, most of the universities, those who are, uh, uh, you know, unsure that how many international students are going to come, what is going to be our class size, whether actually we need uh, any more contractual positions or not. So they were laying off a lot of contractual positions. So people though, who were, you know, teaching one or two modules in a year, or you know, part-time faculty members, they were really, you know, uh, feeling the threat because the universities were laying off the contractual positions. They were only focusing on the permanent people who were there in their, you know, um, uh, university. Now another main issue that that actually bothered us in in UK is uh, the research time allocation. Uh, you know, we we had our, we have our at least 40% of our timing is research based. So we have to do our research and publish. We have to collect funds and you know those sort of issues for the for the department. Now, what happens when you work? Uh, you know, when you focus too much on online activities, you have to come up with quality uh, you know materials and all, uh, and you are writing emails all the day. So you actually you're all the day you are busy. You cannot focus on your research time. But at the end of the day, you will be judged on your research in these universities. Uh, so uh, so you know we are facing this challenge, you know, and we are working almost 24/7 at this moment because we have to have a balance between our research and as well we as well as we try to uh, maintain a good quality support to our towards our students. So that's the really challenging part for us because we don't know what is going to happen in future. We are we are focusing on 
uh, uh, you know, day to day basis and, and planning and preparing on the basis of that. And lab based work has been really hampered because uh, there are a lot of research activities, uh, state of the art lab laboratory facilities are there in this country. But most of those uh, science based laboratory works has been stopped from the March. So, uh, you know, it has been difficult, especially the science faculties to to actually you know um, uh, uh, do the lab works and make the students involved on those so this is another uh, you know very challenging part um, for UK and next thing that I'm going to focus on the students now there are some students who were uh, you know who were very pretty much adaptable to the online assessments UK we have an advantage here is that because uh, most uh, there are a lot of modules we have actually focused on assignments so even some of the modules we have is 100 percent assignment based some of the modules we have like shared like assignments and exams those sort of things so uk is education is always you know they have this advantage because uh, we are not really focused all the time on exams so what we did we we converted the exams into assignments so that was sometimes that was that took a bit time, but you know, uh, uh, but the, our students they they faced some sort of challenge because from the beginning of the semester they had the mentality that well they have to sit for a two hours exam for the final, but now they have to write an assignment. So so and some some of the time British universities are at the British students at the same time international students they are uh, not really willing to you know do this sort of see these sort of changes so that's sometimes you know we felt sometimes we felt difficult to make the students understand that why we are converting the exams to the assignments however uh, because most of them they are aware that well you know uh, there can be modules with full assignments because this is a traditional British policy so they could have easily um, um, you know actually overcome uh, their you know uh, anxieties and uh, difficulties uh, to understand this situation then the main there's another main issue is going on right now this is the month of july where most of the british universities they have their uh, graduation ceremony and good companies good organizations they actually uh, uh, wait for this time to get best graduates out of different universities now this is time the july this is july going on there is no graduation going on although the universities are sending them the certificates but because of the pandemic, most of the businesses are not running well. Most of the businesses have suspended their, you know, uh, uh, recruitment. So the labor market is really difficult now for this particular year. And the students who are graduating, most of them are anxious that whether they will be absorbed to the market or not. So that's a real challenge for the students. And on top of that, students are suffering from health problems. For example, if you sit into the computer for a long time, you have mental health issues, uh, eyesight issues, a lot of things. Uh, students are, you know, um, also designated. Uh, there, there were a few students who were key workers. For example, you either work for NHS uh, or they probably work for any organizations. They were open during the pandemic because they were key workers. They also faced those difficulties and we had to given them an unlimited amount of time to uh, you know to submit their assignments and all so uh, this is the this is another real challenge that we are facing at this country um, students with specific learning difficulties who may be disadvantaged by alternative approaches there are students they are disabled so they they you know they they might have difficulties in 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 getting um, the education through online so that's that's sometimes we are also facing students um, and different subject groups have different sort of ideas like science students they are not really uh, uh, getting the lab work business students they are not really getting the opportunity to present uh, to the uh, to do the presentations so uh, there are, there are different perspectives from the students so some of the students from different uh, subject groups are facing different dif uh, difficulties and students in the final year studies, they are also facing difficulties, as I said, because they are, you know, they are uh, really anxious whether they're going to be absorbed into the, uh, you know, um, market or not. And lack of physical and library and group work activities. In UK, we, especially in the business schools, we focus on more and more group work activities. But that is not, that is not happening now. So that's, that's sometimes something that they are actually missing 
um, um, uh, during this pandemic and this is creating some problem and for the university authorities they are they are facing a lot of difficulties try, trying to overcome for first one was the assessment exams and degree degree uh, classifications so assessments we are doing online, exams we are doing online, but the conversion and the whole process, universities had to struggle to make everybody understand. Second important thing, the entrance to the university. As the British universities are really focused on getting quality students, not only from UK, but also from different parts of the world. Here, there is a problem. This year, we didn't have A-levels exam. Now, because we didn't have the A-level exams, it is becoming, their A-level results are based on basically the teacher's mark that, you know, whenever they go to the school, the school teachers, whatever they have given the mark and on the basis of that, they have been getting admission in the university level. However, there has been a big talk here in the UK that, well, you know, if there was an A-level exam, probably there was, there would have been always better because now we cannot really understand that, well, you know, because it has been an inflated grade for the students and and it is really difficult sometimes to understand which is a better student compared to others. So this is something that we are facing a big challenge. Um, and then another big issue is that with overseas students, like whether the overseas students are coming next year or not, there are overwhelming students. They want to join British universities, especially in the September session. But uh, because of this pandemic, probably, you know, you, you don't know, probably there'll be very less number of students. A lot of students, a lot of universities like us, we have also moved our master's programs. Uh, we have September session as well, and we are also focusing on the January session. For the first time in the history of the British Red Brick Universities, we are doing this. There are few teaching universities, they have January uh, sessions, but all the research-based Red Brick Universities, we focus on the only on September session. Now, because of this pandemic for the first time, we have both the sessions. We have September session and we also have the January session for the master, especially for the master's program so that we can attract more and more international students. There are few universities who are really Chinese dependent, Chinese student dependent. For example, uh, uh, you know, there are universities like Sussex, uh, Essex, a lot of good universities, even University of Manchester, they get a lot of Chinese students from China. And now there's a big question because there is a political situation going on between UK and China regarding Hong Kong. So I don't know. I mean, this is going to be difficult that with how many students are coming from China to study in the United Kingdom. Universities are also facing difficulties. They want to open their classes, physical classes, accommodation facilities. But we have to also maintain the government's rule, social distancing measurement. So it is becoming difficult for the universities to measure that how they can actually follow both you know, simultaneously they can have social distancing at the same time um, physically open their campuses. So as Dr. Mazar said, we are also having some hybrid modes like let's, let's say two thirds of our modules will be mostly focusing on online. There'll be few modules physically from the from the October session, most of in, in, in different British universities. Accommodations are the same. We are, we are trying to maintain social distancing in the accommodation. The budget deficit is a problem. British universities are now focusing on new business models because although most of the British universities are public universities, uh, but they have a business model. It's not that government is paying money and you know universities are spending. It's not like that. It's public university. It's public's money. There is a business model for that. And all the universities, they run their, their, their operations with the money generated from the university. So they are trying to develop new models which can adapt uh, with this sort of pandemic situation, if that is coming, anything is coming um, uh, in nearby. Partnerships, pro uh, we have in University Hall, we have partnership programs in different parts of the world, in Europe, in, in Asian countries. Those partnership programs are being affected because we, our faculty members have not been able to fly there. And, uh, you know, um, uh, th those are happening online and a lot of, you know, miscommunications are happening. So these programs are really being hampered as well. And because we are public university, we have to depend on government decisions. So a lot of things we cannot do our, of our own because we have to focus on the government decision. Finally, just to finish, uh, the opportunities that we found during this COVID-19 is that there are a lot of state of art research is going on in the UK regarding COVID-19. 
especially the vaccine invention. You know that University of Oxford is, has already, uh, they, uh, you know, invented one vaccine, and also uh, Imperial College London. They are really, uh, in, uh, you know, in the second stage. Oxford is already, you know, doing the third stage. So uh, they have invented, you know, a lot of British universities. They were involved in 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 inventing vaccine. At the same time, they were uh, involved in producing uh, 3D masks by using 3D printers, uh, face shields, and so many other, uh, you know, uh, emergency items, which has been supplied to the NHS. So universities has actually contributed a lot in this pandemic to support the local community in this in this country. There are a lot of COVID-19 research are going on on the social science, on the supply chain management, businesses areas, because you know we are getting a lot of grants from government so that you know uh, you know to, uh, to 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 understand the COVID-19 situation. So and and of course at the end, what we have understood that during this COVID-19 we actually produce better quality teaching materials compared to what we used to do physically, because our teaching materials are now very much interactive has you know, uh, much more description so that students, they can understand easily while sitting at the home. So COVID-19 actually not only, you know, in the UK, we haven't, we, of course, we face challenges, but at the same time, we actually got some opportunities as well. So thank you very much to Dr. Nazrul Islam, sir, to giving me the opportunity to, you know, present here in this conference. Thank you, Dr. Mamun, for uh, identifying very specific points regarding uh, the academic uh, academia, regarding the student's point of view and regarding the organization's point of view. And you have correctly mentioned that yes, quality of teaching and evaluation uh, is uh, perceptually hampering and lab-based research work is hampered. And of course, co contextual positions are under threat now. And from the students, uh, they are uh, infected by, the, by this disease they are mentally somewhat sick and uh, sometimes it is difficult to learn uh, online. And from organizational point of view, you have correctly mentioned that yes, university entrance problem, that means new students entrance became a problem now. And of course the students who are going to be graduated, they are affected much because the employers are not able to come to recruit them in the campus. So. Thank you very much, Dr. Mamun, for uh, pinpointing the very specific challenges of COVID-19 in higher educational institutions in the United uh, Kingdom. Now, uh, Professor uh, Mohammed, Dr. Saleh Zohor, can you hear me? Professor Saleh Zohor. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can you please uh, share okay. your regarding the impact? Thank you, of, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. In thanks, thanks for funding. giving me this okay sir second opportunity to say a few words so i'm not going to share my screen now just i'm talking about the uh covid 19 as everybody knows has caused a serious damage to the education like other sectors of economy and in bangladesh the, 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 there are many universities have started taking classes online but what we have found online education it has been a real concern as far as quality education is concerned effectiveness and employability so i'm posing three questions the online education is not panacea for all second one is one is that it, the, the quality of education is a vital question i'm equipping with the same the the other speakers has mentioned and online education has rendered more educated people unemployed in the days to come. So the question is why in the context of Bangladesh, so just right after, right from the March 20, and specifically from March 23rd or 24th, the education system is collapsed in Bangladesh. The, some of the private university, university has started uh, taking classes online and most of the public university have are yet to undertake any classes online. Why? Because of the different socioeconomic reasons. Most of the public universities here, the most of the students are from the poor and middle class family. And, and, and the educational course curriculum of the universities in most, most of the cases, we have courses and syllabus, not curriculum. And we are following that 
that there is lower order learning not higher order learning this is true in most of the cases so the the online education is is ensuring one thing that the teachers can deliver if it is a, a business or social but if it is the science medical and technology where lab is used and education is not possible here effectively so online education serves only a few number of sectors in the education not all and as far as we have education high education madrasa system we have and they lag behind in technology now come on to the point that the teachers most of the teachers they are acquainted with the lower order learning and they are not used to deliver online and therefore they are facing the use of technology in the online system and the, the students who are from the poor and socioeconomic those poor and middle class family now they have diversified they have they have, they have gone to their own villages and they generally finance their own education through tuition and all now they are facing financial problem in the rural area moreover getting on getting education online that involves cost too and on their part they, it is not possible on their part to incur cost on this education through online therefore they are they are far from this line and other one is that as far as education system is concerned now there is another question is moral hazard sir online education if and, and there is a moral hazard are can you ensure that they are not adopting unfair means the second one is the assessment system in bangladesh assessment system is the full is the is the lower order learning but as far as online education is demand for higher order learning as we are not practicing higher order learning so online education is not panacea for the lower order learning so again moral hazard is is coming to the fore or coming to the discussion of us so so with these few words i'm just posing that that if online education goes on that is if this cannot ensure quality this cannot if this cannot ensure effective education therefore the, the people students can get educated through online but unemployability would be a concern in the post academic era and apart from that that is the, the medical and the, the, the technology and lab based education what would be what would happen to the system so we have to think up a new model of course third third of first world technology we cannot use in the third world we have to take the technology so that we can adapt the situation so so therefore therefore we have to think up in this case so so the the the, the students now the who, those who are educated now they are employed we are adding more employment if it is if it is online education and that we have to ensure that is who will bear the cost of these students most of the poor students in and, and on the other hand there is no network in the rural area too again they are facing the problem so so this is all about from a side number one is that that the online education is rendering more educated people unemployed and this cannot ensure effectiveness on the on the other hand affordability of the poor students who are in bulk size in the public university that cannot afford online education and more number of teachers and therefore there was this calls for a radical change in a radical change in the education we have to go for higher order learning obviously who is demanded for and with these few words i'm conclude my deliberation thank you professor nasrul thank you uh, dr uh, professor mohammad sale zahur for bringing uh, a new issue that in bangladesh all the educational sectors are not covered by this online system like madrasa education and other education system maybe only some of the private universities are adopting this online education system so uh, it is it is partly adopted uh, in bangladesh and you are correctly said that the poor uh, students who are coming from poor and middle income group they are really in a problem with this online education system they are sometimes unable to afford their education to afford the online uh, cost or uh, also any internet connectivity is also infrastructural problem is also in front of them and uh, therefore uh, uh, the higher order learning is uh, not possible uh, almost impossible or very hard uh, in in bangladesh uh, online uh, education system 
and also you have mentioned that uh, there is a doubt about the evaluation system or the fairness in evaluation among the students and also the guardians and uh, i am sure that it will take some time to to work on this uh, problem regarding the assessment and evaluation and the exam and uh, you are sure that a lab based education system is important here and also other uh, difficulties which are confronted with faculty members who are not exactly uh, trained with this online uh, teaching learning process and methods so therefore a new model of uh, teaching learning uh, method is to be uh, identified or developed uh, by uh, bangladeshi educational institutions to make this online teaching learning method more effective thank you professor dr md salajor for your valuable thoughts and impact on uh, covid-19 in higher educational institutions of bangladesh uh, dear um, colleagues and participants now i am going to um, uh, share some questions asked by our by the participants and and specific questions asked to dr md saurgan dr saurgan are you here hello dr sabur khan hello sir sir maybe uh, uh, disconnected so but i i observed that from studio sir okay. maybe move, move on others expert. okay and uh, mr raihan mazumdar he asked this question to sabur khan anybody any expert from here can answer his question is since most of the universities already started uh started uh, their activities through online so how it will affect on our education system during and after covid 19 this question was asked by mr rahan mazumdar to dr md sabur khan can anybody answer dr salih zahur can you share yes sir yeah well uh, look up uh, as i mentioned that we are to develop a new based a new education model as as far as uh, use of technology in the post covid area is concerned and we cannot make sure only some of the students in the private university they are using their 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 on online education but if the lion share of the students are far from this education system however but we are to, we, we we can say that we have completed we have completed the semester Through online education, not making sure whether the provided by us or through online is effective or not, it would enhance employability of the students or not. So this is to be taken into consideration. Therefore, we we cannot say that online education is the panacea. Online education does suffice the purpose of the people. So the education system, the online education system, is to link is to be linked to the higher order learning. and only the hazard can be reduced and the quality can be incre increased and the employability is is going to get increased and this is from my side thank you uh, thank you very much professor saleh zahur another question has been asked by murshidul alam shourab to dr mazhar islam mazhar islam are you here his question is considering the covid 19 pandemic what is the chance of getting funding for ms or mba programs in business schools in united states and the second question is would be a good decision to have masters in either business analytics or data science for accounting dr mazhar yeah so uh, let me address the first question first so i think uh, it's very difficult to say funding with most cases in masters and mba programs in the united states foreign students do not receive funding uh, but then i have to be very careful about that so often time a better strategy would be to have money for one semester it a bit risky but still it could come to united states uh, with an intention to study with your own money but have only one semester money so you could come here for one semester money and then you could um after coming here uh, you could get some job research assistantship so when i came to united states first time 20 plus years ago i already had a masters but i came with one semester money to be honest with you and then after 40 the first semester i went to every department and tried to find a job 
I initially worked for, for the library for a couple of years, a couple of months, and then I managed to make sure to get a really high GPA in the first semester. And second semester, I was lucky to get an assistantship to work with the professor. He paid for my tuition fees and as well as my living expenses. So I took risk and I think you have to take risk. So this is one way you can think about. Now, the second question you have in terms of business analytics and data science programs, as well as accounting. So business analytics, data science are really hot areas. Um, I have students from China who came to United States to study and got a good job. But I want to keep you, I want to warn you uh, that because of the high demand in analytics and data science, many, many schools started offering this program. And you have to be careful about which school you choose to go because there are schools that are offering these programs because there's a demand, but they may not offer you the kind of skills that you need uh, for uh, getting a good job. So please be mindful about yeah. that. I, 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 I feel free to contact me if you want. Send me an email. My email address is on the website. If you need to, uh, if you need to, if you need someone to say about programs. In terms of accounting, a more established, and there is a steady flow, flow of demand uh, for many years now, and we see a lot of students coming from Asia. So most uh, business analytics, master's program, and accounting programs, both are popular among Chinese students. Accounting is a great area uh, to come and get a job. Again, uh, you have to be a little bit careful about the programs you choose. However, accounting, one thing, uh, advantage is that there's like CPA and all those uh, certification that kind of um, that kind of um, uh, clarity uh, that kind of uh, assures the quality like if you have a cpa and then if you, you know you are good to go kind of situation again I, I would be happy to give you more advice or suggestion if you contact me through email thank you thank you dr mazar now another question has been asked by munshi shariyatullah joel to dr mamu and he wants to know that uh know from you that uh, is the online education system sacrificing the quality of real learning of graduates and to what extent to your uk university dr mamun hello dr mamun yes thank you sir uh, thank you for the question um Basically, yes, uh, there are challenges that we face in, in online education. There are some challenges as, for example, students cannot do group work, study, uh, work activities or, you know, the libraries, they have online access, of course. Uh, students, they can, the, they, they can get the resources from the library. However, you know, working in a library environment or physical environment, that sort of facilities uh, is not there during the online education. So there are some challenges. However, we try to make it possible. Uh, we try to, you know, uh, uh, make this uh, or provide this education in such a way that we do not compromise with the quality. So, yes. Yeah, so, you, I think it, it it answers your question. We really focus on our quality, and we ma we make sure that we can provide uh, hundred percent quality that we used to provide during the physical classrooms keeping in mind this pandemic situation and also facing these challenges but we try to do as I and mean, whatever we can in order to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, provide quality education and help the students in, in, in different ways thank you thank you dr mamun now i uh, have a question to professor maran dr maran uh, students are asking question regarding the uh, exams online exams and evaluation and assessment. What about the evaluation and assessment, online evaluation and online assessment practicing by the Indian uh, universities and higher educational institutions now? Can you please share with us? So, okay, so great questions. Uh, on behalf of all Indians you are asking, I think the Ministry of HRD recently, they have given instruction to all the universities 
you can conduct the examinations for all final year students either through online or their convenient basis they will also but what is the situation what you are facing problems in your own country you know so like that we are also facing problem the internet i think in the network infrastructure facilities are very very important this is the first thing the network infrastructure facilities so at the same time the students also have to spend that much of money affordability for the purchase of internet bandwidth everything is more important then apart from that what happening here then they have to write the examinations the evaluation process now what they are recently they announced i think yesterday they were discussing about open book systems open book like uk examination systems is it possible to allow the open book system for all the students i think it is really very difficult to task to appearing examinations through the online even the evaluation system also same thing so i am saying i used to tell this kind of uh, what you call the evaluation system the examination system only in terms of the objectives objectives either we are discuss of descriptive which is really very very difficult to task even the mathematics problematic subject engineering oriented subject how is it possible to appearing their examinations through the online that is one of the major difficult task that's what the ugc the ministry of hrd has announced what up here i think either you can use online method or offline method whatever the convenient which is purely based again with the students comfortability and their convenient so it is re really very difficult task i think the private universities they are adapted why because the private universities they, i think their students affordability is there and they are ready to invest in anything they are ready to accept it where in this case of government based university the rural based areas which is really very very difficult task that's why the hrd flexing the system flexible system is there according their community you have to conduct and submit their marks unless otherwise they won't give but the state government the every states they are announcing their own system there is no examinations you can declare the degree awarding the degrees so this is the conditions now but online examinations are difficulty also which is not possible only objectives i am saying when you are appearing the examinations before you are reaching your home that result will be reached through your whatsapp social media or message sms like that so that kind of possibilities are always there but the descriptive wise mathematical wise problematic wise diagram wise picture wise which is really very very tough in your online system this is my perception thank you thank you very much professor maran for giving the answer of this question now i would like to draw the attention of professor dr arhan you know through our discussion so it came out that for the newly graduated students who are facing unemployment problem right now because employers are not interested at all to recruit any graduate to their companies so under these situations what do you think what about the uh nepali context how this problem can be overcome and what you, what will be your suggestion to the newly uh, new graduate students uh, of, of the higher educational institutions professor dr arha uh yes yes sir uh, thank you for the question uh, actually it is a concern of all the uh, academia and uh, academic leaders here uh, not only in this part of the world but the uh, probably the whole world i believe uh yeah of course the uh, there is of course a big challenge uh, for, but i feel uh, and I, i hope all would also agree with me uh, this uh, pandemic situation and, uh, and the ensuing crisis will remain uh, not for years and years or decades and decades but uh, of course it is short so once uh, the the worst is over uh, things would yes if uh, as i uh, mentioned earlier during my presentation also if one door closes uh, so many other doors open so that means uh, of course we have uh, right now we have faced a, a terrible problem uh, that uh, the human kind has gone through for the first time in the history of course but uh, it will be short lived and if uh, this uh, situation ha this crisis has uh, happened then it would open up more and more doors so 
if uh, you, uh, we have lost jobs in the conventional industries or conventional uh, areas of course newer uh, newer and newer avenues would open that will observe more uh, graduates but of course uh, we have to develop our graduates uh, in, in what the industries in the future would uh, require for example uh, we, we might uh, focus on uh, some uh, analytical and uh, numerical skills, more more on analytical and numerical skills, and also ICT and digital skills, social skills, uh, instead of manual skills or occupation-specific knowledge only. So if we, we are able to do that, of course, uh, that uh, the, it will result in a better situation tomorrow also and as far as nepal's situation is concerned uh, job losses have been reported but of course there are uh, opportunities is galore also i believe uh, so the i mean i mean the industries which do not uh, try right now can uh, develop in the in the future in, in this uh, difficult situation so that means uh, once the crisis is here now it will uh, open up new avenues for more industries for example now uh, home based industries i mean the industries that can really deliver services from home office uh, can uh, this type of industry can grow i mean outsourcing industries can grow that means uh, these are the new areas new industries that can observe more graduates in future so as we work together of course i emphasize also on um, uh, collaboration uh, in the governmental level, in intergovernmental level, interorganizational level. If, if the collaboration is there, of course, uh, we, we work together and uh, explore new ways to, uh, to, to address this uh, labor or job specific uh, problems. Uh, so I think uh, I have uh, answered your question. I, I wonder if I answer the question. Thank you. Thanks, Professor Dr. Arhan. So, Professor Salazar, would you like to add uh, something with yes. Dr. Arha regarding this unemployment issue of the new graduates? Dr. Zohur. Uh, unemployment problem. Thank you for your nice question. Uh, as far as unemployment it is concerned, as, a, as I have posed a nice question, uh, uh, that, that is online education has rendered more educated people are un unemployed. So why? Why? Because the, 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 very, the very reason is that the students who will get certificate from online education, they, 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 uh, their education is not effective. And, and they, they, they cannot even ready to serve the organization because of having a lower level of education. So that what, what, what we, we have to make sure that is if we go for online education, the our teaching system should be revised. That is, higher order learning should be introduced. Case studies should be introduced. Innovative questions and answers should be introduced so that a person even can see the book, can write the answer. Okay, open book, open book system they can follow. You know, there is no harm, but here their moral hazard can be reduced. So to, to increase the employability, effective education should be ensured through enforcing through in the injecting higher water up learning, only then employability would increase. The, the, the most important problem, the, the people, the educated people are just facing in getting the job, that is the entrepreneurs or the organizations who are going to employ them, they educate, they just interview them. If they find nothing practical they have been, and they cannot share even, Therefore, they, they go, they, they're not appointing them. So sometimes they, they tell that, okay, the students from this, this university are restricted. Unless from this university, we are going to entertain. So in this, as a for example, IBA, say for example, public universities. So they are entertaining. Most of the private universities in some cases are not being entertained by the employers because of having this kind of problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Saleh Zohur. I think we have arrived at the our last stage of today's conference. So today, uh, all of you identified a uh, lot of um, uh, impact issues uh, due to COVID-19 uh, or in higher education uh, system. 
in the in the world, specifically USA, UK, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. And this uh, problem in fact immediately started with communication problem with the staff and the students. And of course, it was a, it was an enrollment problem. Or most of the universities enrollment is now at the at the zero level. Not not no no not no many not no more no students are coming to admit almost. And of course, in uh, for the private universities or institutions, there is a negative impact, uh, uh, financial impact, and uh, it is very difficult to overcome this negative financial impact in a shortest possible time. And um, international students' mobility also is a problem. They are right now unable to move, and we also do not know when they will be able to move, when they will be able to go to the uh, uh, to other countries for their. Uh, higher education and for uh, for uh, developing their uh, career and of course the research activities of the institutions higher educational institutions are highly affected uh, um, uh, by this uh, covid-19 uh, pandemic and uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, quality of education i think uh, some of the universities and some of the universities of some countries have uh, already set a standard uh, quality education uh, uh, online uh, in online uh, teaching learning uh, method, but most of the universities of the world they have they could not yet uh, standardized this online quality education system, and um, research shows that uh, the increasing inequality among the higher educational institutions in this pandemic situations all the universities are not equally. Um, um, running uh, properly uh, like before. So maybe at one time there will be the difference between the universities. Some universities will go forward, some universities will uh, lag behind. And um, uh, Dr. Arhan correctly said this: these uh, problems are mainly um, uh, related to the system uh, generated problem. That means the um, uh, IT system and these are are uh, also related to uh, human wear and of course uh, the uh, software. And uh, uh, Dr. Sabur Khan correctly said as he is the entrepreneur in educational sector, also the chairman of Davodil International University. He also correctly uh, said and he perceived that this is a problem, no doubt. This has negative impact, no doubt, but it has got positive side. It has, it has created opportunity for us to learn latest technology to learn information and communication technology. Dr. Maran correctly answered that yes, digital grading systems create obstacles for us and um, uh, and our faculty members are not, uh, not very much uh, uh, equipped with this uh, soft or digital learning uh, systems and uh, the mindset, students mindset also you mentioned that it is also another obstacle for this online uh, education system. So that to uh, from come out from this uh, situation, he suggested that government should come forward and entrepreneurial teaching is important. Dr. Um, uh, Mazhar, he um, mentioned that yes, there are some financial impact on the, uh, specifically on the private institutions, higher education institutions, Although some of the institutions, some of the universities are used to with this um, uh, online uh, teaching learning method. Uh, however, in this pandemic situation, most of the universities are adopting hybrid system and, uh, and uh, uh, successfully they are adopting hybrid system and they are uh, uh, perhaps uh, adopted the uh, fair and acceptable uh, assessment and evaluation system in United States. Uh, even though uh, the foreign students are unable to move uh, to go to United States for their higher education. And um, uh, Dr. Uh, Saleh Zahur, uh, he mentioned uh, that uh, it is very difficult in Bangladesh to cover all the educational sector under this online or uh, digital education system, specifically an example uh, like uh, madrasa education system, perhaps there is a, they have a problem with these connections and digital uh, online system. So 
uh, basically through this online education system we are providing lower order learning rather we are unable to provide higher order uh, learning because of this constraints you also mentioned that the doubt about the evaluation and the fairness in evaluation that is still there in the mind of the guardians uh, even uh, the students and uh, even the faculty members whether the evaluation they are doing is it fair or is it acceptable to them or not and dr mamon uh, very specifically identified uh, specific area challenging areas uh, concerning the academics or academia students and organization uh, that means the universities he mentioned one point i would like to mention here that he focused uh, on the uh, final year students who are highly affected um, um, uh, by this uh, covid 19 because they are unable to get job because there are there are uh, no employers coming uh, to recruit them and of course other problems identified health issues and also the uh, contractual jobs are under threat and uh, uh, in other country uh, perhaps not only concert contractual jobs the permanent jobs are also under threat and in uh, for irrespective of the uh, complexity and the nature of the subject this online education is really difficult and um, research is hampering because of this covid 19 so um, uh, i think after uh, your uh, discussing and raising the very important issues uh, we can say that the uh, basically we uh, uh, cannot avoid this online uh, uh, education system because there is no other alternative right now and we also do not know how long it will continue and after how many uh, years we'll be able to come back or go back to the, our previous system so we shall have to live with the problems we shall have to live with this digital um, uh, teaching learning process we shall have to live with this digital evaluation and assessment system therefore uh, from the faculty members part we can train our faculty members we can uh, provide the quality teaching materials to our students we can provide training to our faculty members and uh, of course we shall have to develop faith on our uh, on the assessment and evaluation uh, systems faith um, of the students faith of the guardians and even faith of the faculty members they must accept this online evaluation and online assessment system and um, the financial impact it is very difficult to overcome this financial impact so um, uh, uh, policy makers uh, want to say that if the government can come forward um, uh, side by side then these private institutions or private higher educational institutions may overcome their financial uh, problem which was caused due to this COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, pandemic. So, uh, dear colleagues and resource persons, distinguished resource person, it was really an excellent discussion uh, tonight. And I, um, uh, uh, I would like to extend my cordial thanks and heartiest thanks to all of you for joining us tonight and uh, giving your valuable thoughts and uh, presenting uh, the, your context to the participants, to the students, to the employers, to the stakeholders of higher education institutions of the world. So, dear colleagues, with this, I would like to stop here and I would like to uh, uh, request Mr. MD Saiful Islam to give the vote of thanks to our distinguished discussants and colleagues. Thank you. Saiful. Yes, sir. Thank you. thank you, sir. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to extend my cordial thanks to all of our all known resource person from Women Abroad for their unconditional cooperation and presence in this program on a virtual platform. Thank you so much for, to all of your resource person. And now I would uh, say something few words to our today's convener. And not a single event can be performed by without a leader. It was a great opportunity for me to perform under the guidance of Professor Dr. Nozul Islam 
convener international web conference 2020 his effort were marvelous and embarked a new dimension in the field of our, our education field thank you sir thank you again for your cooperation now i would like to uh, few words to our today's patron organization to our professional academia for their continuous support to make this event unforgettable and for adding glory in the history of Bangladesh to add one more feather in the field of education in the global issues. Now, it's our closing, closing session, uh, closing. Dear audience, with this, we conclude here with remarkable and memorable International Web Conference 2020. We promise you all that in the next web conference, we will enter in the field with some more innovative ideas to nourish your mind, inshallah. On behalf of professional peer academia, I promise you that this may be the end of today's session, but undoubtedly, this is a new beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much for your enthusiastic presence in this conference. Thank you so much to all of our research person, convener, and our viewers. Thank you so much. And end, all, end of our today's session. Thank you.